Okay, today's project is on this Dodge Ram. This is a 2006 3500. Um, it has developed a death wobble, or maybe it's had it ever since I've owned it. Not sure. Uh, it doesn't do it very often, but when it does do it, it's very noticeable. Um, usually above 50 miles an hour, if I hit a bump just right, or rather just wrong, it starts a massive shaking in the front end until I slow down and then it's back to normal until the next bump. So I've had this thing in the shop and uh, they've replaced a bunch of stuff. New steering box, new steering linkage, track bar, uh, put a steering stabilizer aftermarket on there. Uh, none of that has helped. Uh, so now I'm going to do ball joints and see if that helps. Uh, and I'm going to do that one myself, try to save a few hundred bucks. So let's get into it. Okay. First step is going to be take off this brake caliper. Now rotor, it's got these little hold downs, these things, you can just cut them off or sometimes I'll just spin them off if I can. Next step is this uh, little ABS sensor. So it comes in right here. There's a Allen nut, and then it should wiggle out. It's a five millimeter. Okay, so Okay, so I got it out there. Um, and then you can see if there's a little slot for it. It's hard to do this one handed, but So 
So the next part, I guess, is the harder part, where we'll be removing, so I guess what I gather is this, this nut here is difficult to take on and off, it requires something like 250 or 275 foot pounds to put back on. So we're going to leave that on and instead remove the whole bearing hub assembly, which is four bolts back here. And we'll use the old technique of using the steering to kind of push this out and then pull the whole axle. I got all four of these loose and now I'm just going to uh, run them out until uh, they're about flush with this housing and then we'll start pressing so you can see this one is just maybe just barely cracked loose it's sticking out half an inch so we'll run them back and then press and then run them back a little bit and press more if needed Okay, um, so I've got these all loosened. We're going to use the steering technique to try to push this hub out. I've got my assistant to turn the wheel while I kind of monitor what's happening here. So we're going to give this a go. Okay, Eli, turn to the right. A little more. Okay, uh, hold on. Back a little bit. Okay, to the right. Okay, give it. Uh, like hard to the right, kind of bounce it a little bit, more, bounce a little bit, like, you know, kind of jerk the wheel, oh, wait, okay, left, okay, stop, okay, turn to the right, Okay, hard to the right. A little more. A little more. Okay, uh, back to the left. Okay, stop for a second. Okay, so what's happening here is as he turns the wheel, this is jamming up against here pushing on the bolt. And I can see just a tiny crack opening here, which is good. That means it's working, so we're just going to slowly work it out. Okay, turn it to the left. More. 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 Okay, now hard. Yeah, okay, I think
think what we'll do is start it up and use the power steering to get a little more pressure here. Okay, this is working good. Let's we're gonna try the other side one more time. Stop. Okay, more. Oh, stop. Back. Okay, wait. Okay, slowly to the right. Okay. One more. Okay, stop. Back to the right. Okay, all four bolts out. This is loose. It's ready to come. So, so you can see this is all ready to slide out. So the whole axle will come out. There is a seal back in there to be careful of, but we'll carefully pull it out and set it to the side. thing is to disconnect this tie rod. Okay, so uh, these should have been out recently when they replaced these tie rod ends, so hopefully this won't be too hard to get out. Um, I've seen a couple people say uh, you just give it a knock here and it gets real loose. And then I also saw a suggestion of putting this castle nut back on upside down and giving it a little bump this way. And those didn't work at all. There it goes. Had to get serious with it.
Okay, so here's this. Um, and, like I can feel a little bit of up and down play, which I don't think it should have. So hopefully this is gonna help. The next step here is taking these uh, the nuts off of the old ball joints. I got these nuts off. I'm going to leave this bottom one on a couple threads in the event that I actually get this thing to drop, it'll land on that bolt and not on my knee. Hey, all right, that wasn't too bad. Okay, now comes the second hard part of this job, which is pressing these out. Yeah, that's not, not great. Uh, so, this one's got a snap ring. We'll remove that. This one presses down and out. This one presses up and out. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Okay, I've watched uh, a few videos of people pressing these out, and nobody ever seems to have the right size adapters. So I got this kit on Amazon that's got a whole bunch. So with a little luck, uh, somewhere in here I can find something that works. Okay, this seems all fine. The trouble is, this kind of gets in the way of having a straight shot, so it's all kind of janky. Uh, we'll just do what everybody else does and muddle through here, I guess. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm doing the top one first. I got a setup here that I'm pretty happy with. That looks pretty good.
check it out. Okay, that actually worked pretty good. I'm going to mark these pieces that I use so that I remember which ones they are for the next side. Now that the top one's out, I'm hoping that I can feed this through here and get a little straighter shot. Um, I think I was liking this cup. Okay, let's compare these new and old ball joints. So here's the old bottom one. Um, you know, I mean, it feels pretty. I don't know what these necessarily means they're bad, but this one's pretty loose. This one, the new one, I can just get to move with my hands. So much tighter. Um, similar story with the top one. This is the old top one. I mean, it in and out pretty easily. This one, I, this one I can't even get to move with my hand. So, uh, hopefully, these were actually causing a problem, and these new ones will will help. So, next step is going to be getting them in. So, I guess I'm going to do opposite of disassembly and, and put the bottom one in first and then the top one. So so these are the Moog ones. Everybody loves Moog. This one's got a little uh, Zerk grease fitting that I'll put in after I install it, but I guess I want that kind of facing out to the side, so I will pay attention to where that's at. Okay, I'm looking for the the piece that I guess fits right on this collar. This one's pretty close. But this one close. But I don't love it. So this new one's got uh kind of a bevel here and a lot of my pieces fit somewhere along the bevel and I'm worried once I press they're gonna spread out and they're gonna be hard to get off. This one kinda just pushes at the top so I'm gonna try this one.
Okay, I think it's in. The true test will be if I can get the snap ring on. Any snap ring? All right. Oh. Okay, the suckers are in. Um, Zerk fitting. That was next. Okay, now we're ready to put the steering knuckle back on. Uh, according to my paperwork here, this bottom one should be 160 foot-pounds.
right there. There. Okay, top one is supposed to be 70. in back in next Okay, I got these all started. Now I'm just gonna go around and around and slowly uh, pull this hub back in. Okay, these are supposed to be 150 foot-pounds. this tie rod back. And this guy, 70. Gotta go run and grab a new clip for that.
Cal caliper. Okay, uh, brake caliper, bracket, bolts, 130 foot-pounds. All right, wheel, it's the last thing, put the wheel back. Okay, that side is done. Uh, I feel like it mostly went smoother than I thought it would. Um, getting those ball joints pressed out, not too bad, actually. Um, and the old ones did seem pretty worn out, so hopefully this will help. Now I just gotta do the other side. So it's time to move all this operation around to the other side, and then uh, I'll take it for a little test drive and see if it seems any different, although it may take a couple of weeks to know it's fixed for good. So I'll check back here in a day or two and let you know how it's going. Okay, it's been a couple of weeks since I finished up this ball joint job on this truck. Um, I did the passenger side here after completing the driver side and this one went a lot smoother. It was a lot easier once I had an idea of how it was going to go. Um, this is pretty easy. So uh, I've been driving it, uh, took it on some long trips, full speed on the highway over some pretty big bumps and no death wobble. Uh, feels a lot more solid. I think that was the, the ball joints was the real issue here and it seems fixed now. So I'm happy about that. Um, as far as cost, I had a, an estimate for this job from a, a local shop. They were wanting about $900 to, to do this work. Um, I got the ball joints off Amazon for about $180 total and then also my press kit was about $100 and then I needed a pickle fork kit and that was $24. That was what I used to separate the steering knuckle from the ball joints. Uh, so all said I was into this job for about $300 which is a savings of about $600 over what the shop wanted. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, well worth it. Uh, had fun doing it. Job wasn't too bad. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy that it's fixed and, and ready to roll. So until next time.